Warning, off-topic rant approaching. To skip this, use the timestamps in the description. Okay, so, for the longest time I've had memories from when I was four or five years old of a creepy young teen show about kids going to a creepy school and supernatural things happening there. Specifically, I remember a scene where the lunch gentleman had a disturbing monster pop out of one of his pots. Then the creature chased down a kid, nearly chewing on the kid's face. For decades, I've tried to find out what this show was, because this scene in particular scared the heck out of me. And until today, I never found it. I honestly thought I made it up. But my beautiful peeps, I found it. And there are full episodes of it on YouTube. So if you want to watch a strange but fun show from the 90s, check out Bone Chillers on YouTube. The episode with the scene I mentioned above is called Art Intimidates Life. It's on YouTube too. Anyway, sorry about that, I just had to share it with someone. This is the exciting stuff you're missing if you aren't following me on Twitter, at Dark Prevails, by the way. Anyway, today's episode features some very awesome stories. From humanoids in the Rockies to near victims hiding in leaf piles from hungry monsters. Today's episode is rated, Hey, That's Pretty Good, by me. Enjoy, and remember to send me your scary stories at darkstories.org to have them narrated. Now, let's begin. Pale Gray Humanoid Encounter in the Wyoming Rockies from C. Philly 100. This story was told to me by my friend, but it's pretty wild, so I thought I'd share it here, told from his perspective. I was camping in the Wind River Range in Wyoming, which is coincidentally the highest range in the state. I was getting ready to go to sleep in my car at the trailhead when I saw SAR leaving. They let me know they'd been searching for a hiker who had been reported missing for 24 hours. They said they had to turn back now though, due to a big winter storm system moving through the area. Before leaving, they said they'd be back in the morning, but to be on the lookout. I said I would, but my hopes were rather low for his survival at this point in time. I set out bright and early the next morning. It had snowed about a foot overnight. My objective was Mount Gannett, which is the tallest peak in the Wind River Range, at 13,804 feet or so. I had my snowshoes on, but it was still rather slow going. I was taking in the natural beauty and enjoying myself when I noticed some fresh tracks in the snow. These were human. They were plowing straight through the trees and bushes and everything else in a straight line. Thinking it might be the missing hiker, I decided to follow them. I'd only gone about 400 yards or so when I thought I heard a familiar sound. It sounded like a baby crying. My human instinct took over and I started in the direction from whence I'd heard the sound. What struck me as odd, however, was that the pitch never changed. It sounded almost like a recording of a baby crying played on a loop or something. I looked up just in time to see something dart behind a tree. I became a bit confused at that point as I could no longer hear the baby crying and I wasn't entirely sure what I was doing there anymore. I went to turn around when something once again caught my eye. Something stepped out from behind a tree. It looked like a pale humanoid creature. The best thing I can think to compare it to would be that white orc from the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit series, although it didn't look exactly like that. The face was similar, no nose and this look of total hatred and malice. It had this sinister grin on its face that seemed to say, that's it, I've got you. It was about six or seven feet tall and extremely muscular. It didn't appear to have any hair or male or female parts, it began to walk through the snow seemingly without any resistance at all. It never broke direct eye contact with me. The only motion seemed to be a slight bobbing up and down. Other than that, it was very intentional with its movements. I started stumbling backwards, tripping over my snowshoes in my attempt to turn around. I heard a gunshot then, looking up to see an SAR officer wielding a pump-action shotgun. The creature screamed like a banshee before leaping back out of sight, leaving a slight trail of thick dark blood in its path. 
The officer ran over, helping me to my feet. He radioed that he'd found someone in such and such part of the grid. We made our way back to the trailhead together. We were met by someone on a snowcat. The officer said he'd shot a bear that had been charging me. He looked at me, though, knowingly, and I figured I'd trust his intuition. I mean, who would believe there had been a tall, hairless, pale, white man out there preying on people? It turns out the other guy, who had actually been missing, had spent the night on the mountain, hunkered down in a hollow. He had made his way, albeit somewhat unorthodoxly, back down to the trailhead. I am immensely grateful to these volunteers, to whom I owe my life. To all of you listening or reading this, be careful if you're heading out into the Wyoming Rockies. There's something out there, and I have a feeling that shotgun didn't do much to slow it down. It stalks our land. From Waterless Goldfish. What I've got going on has been occurring for a while now. I'm still not sure what it is, or if it's only just one thing doing it. I live on this nice one acre of land. Although we live on a busy road, the place isn't too bad. Well, at least when the sun is up. Because this only seems to happen at night. Sometimes we can stay in our yard and listen to the night critters going about their business. However, other nights, everything inside you will tell you to get back inside. The feeling of dread and being watched is what mostly happened. Sometimes at 3am you'll hear what sounds like something running around the house. At first, we tried to just ignore it. My mother and I both experienced and witnessed different things. Even my aunt that lived with us at the time had stuff happen to her. We have two dogs, one a full-grown terrier and the other a puppy pit bull. My mother was taking out the puppy, while the other dog watched from the window. She says she felt as though she was being watched, so she turned around, and when she did, the oldest dog started to bark aggressively from the window. Mind you, he was never aggressive like that, not even while he was playing. As she heard him bark, she saw what appeared to be a black shadow or orb charging right at her. It was about to reach her when she quickly turned back around and yelled, Leave me alone! You're not welcomed here! After that, the oldest dog stopped barking. Then the feeling of being watched disappeared, as did the shadow. A few nights before that, I had an experience that still shakes me to my core. I was coming back home from running to the gas station. I was scrolling through my phone while my truck was off. Sitting in the driveway, I had no feeling of dread or being watched, so I thought I was safe. Come to find out, I was very wrong. I heard what sounded like something crawling on top of my mother's car. Her car was in front of my truck. Without a thought, I turned on the truck. It roared to life, and the headlights beamed out in front of me, hitting the car. But there was nothing on top of it. To my horror, as I moved my eyes back and forth, trying to see anything out of the ordinary around my mom's car. Then I heard a noise behind me, and a feeling of weight being shifted towards my truck's bed, as if something had just crawled into it. Not even daring to turn around to see what was back there, I threw the truck into reverse, slamming my foot on the gas pedal. I assumed I would hit something or throw it off, but there was nothing. Even if it did make it all the way into the bed, my reversing would have caused it to slam into my back window. But again, nothing. I left for a while and when I came back, I did not hesitate to run inside. These are some of the more recent experiences, and there's plenty more where that came from. What else is out there? From Randy. As of writing this, it's almost 2022, and I'll be 64 come January 14th. I've never believed in anything abnormal. That is until one morning on November 2017. I grew up and still live in a little town called Hazelwood, Indiana, just about three miles south of Interstate 40. 
About half a mile south of 40, there's a creek called Mud Creek. It runs under Road Zero, heading out of Hazelwood. Before the creek, when you're headed to 40 on the east side of the road, there's a long driveway with the house at the end you see when you're driving by. And to the south of that drive is fields where they plant crops. So it was November and there were no crops, so I had a good view. I worked at Napa and Danville. That was about 20 minutes north of the interstate. It was early in the morning and I was heading out to work. By then, there was already daylight. When I was younger, there used to be a lot of wooded areas, but not so much now. But behind the house, there are still woods, about half a mile from Road Zero. At the time, there was a little car in front of me, getting ready to cross Mud Creek. Just then, I looked to my right, and I saw this figure of a man-like thing on all fours running faster than any person could. It was covered in dark black hair, and I'd say it was about six feet tall. At the time, I thought it looked like something had scared it. About then, it approached the road slowly a little, looking at me for a short moment. I was definitely taken aback, because its face seemed like something between a dog and a man's face. It had pointed ears, too. However, it all happened so fast, so I couldn't get more detail. Then the creature leapt into the air. It flew over the car and was gone in a flash. Thinking back, I wonder if the person in that little car saw what happened, but I never caught up with them. To this day, I still remember it, and I can't get it out of my mind. I know what I saw was real. I mean, think about how something that fast could travel. It could cover a couple of states in a day. And where would it go? Where would it stay? How in the world would you catch something like that? Often I ask myself, is it still out there? Terrifying Shadow Creature From Earth and Rose My family has a history of really weird things happening to them, but this story is probably the most memorable, at least to me, because of how terrified I was that night. Back when my fiancé and I started dating, we were in a long-distance relationship, so every chance to talk was precious to us. This particular night, we stayed up until 3 a.m. before we both called it a night. At the time, I was living with my mom. It was just me and her in the house. And being 3 a.m., she was already in bed with her door closed. Now, my mom's room was to my right and my bathroom to my left, my room being in the middle. So, after I hung up the phone, I opened my door and turned left to head to my bathroom. Everything at the moment was dark and quiet. I brushed my teeth and got ready for bed. As I headed back to my bedroom, I noticed movement in the hallway out of the corner of my eye, and I turned to look. Standing there was a shadow that was darker than the surrounding darkness. It was incredibly thin and lanky, and was very, very tall. I couldn't see any facial features other than its glowing red eyes. Up to that point, I thought people were exaggerating when they would say they were paralyzed with fear. But when I stared back into those eyes, I could not move. Even when my mind was screaming at me that I was going to die, that it wanted to hurt me. We must have stared at each other unmoving for no more than 10 seconds, but it felt like hours. Finally, it lifted its right arm towards me. It was enough to snap me out of it. I listened to my frantic mind and fled to my room without a second thought. It took all my sanity not to slam my door and wake my mother, as I had no idea if it was going to stay or leave. Immediately, I launched into every prayer I knew, punctuated with demands that it leave, not return, and to not harm anyone in the house. I had to have stayed up for at least another hour, praying and panicking, before I passed out from exhaustion. The following evening, before it got too dark, I even tried to debunk it by seeing if the red could have been the light from our TV or something. Nope. The light from the electronics aren't high enough. Thankfully, I don't live there anymore, and my mom hasn't mentioned encountering anything similar. The House From Anonymous 
This story is something my parents had experienced. My mom and dad were just trying to get stable, on their feet, trying to get a little money, and my mom being a month pregnant with me, they needed a place to stay. Luckily, my grandpa had offered them to stay in the house behind his, as it had also belonged to him, and he had no use for it. The house was two stories, white, with a deep blue roof and window frames. It was an offer my parents couldn't refuse. Once my parents entered the home, they said they had a very bad feeling about the place. My mom said there was this dresser in front of the door, and one drawer was strangely agape, which had given her a weird vibe. So my mom placed a trash can in front of it to properly close it. It took only a week of them being there for strange happenings to occur. My mom and dad told me how the television would randomly turn off by itself, even when no one was near it. There was also another time when my mom said she was just reading before going to sleep and my dad had begun making weird groaning sounds. One day while my dad was out of the house due to work, my mom was just cleaning when she heard some pans from the kitchen cling together. She descended the stairs and looked around. All of a sudden, the television turned on. She turned her head only to see static. Then a pan fell and my mom went to fully turn around, but something had held down her foot as she was turning. It caused her to break her fifth metatarsal, which is the hardest bone to break in your foot. My dad stayed at the house with her as long as he could each day, but work came calling. My dad said that sometimes he'd see the bathroom light turn on and even hear the shower running, but no one would be there. Both my parents can even account a time where they thought they heard the other's voice, but when they called back, they were met with silence. My dad said one time when he came home, he saw my mom sitting in my grandpa's truck, so he approached her. Honey, what's wrong? He asked. I'm not going back in that house. My mom answered. My dad went inside and once he did, he said he saw every cabinet, every drawer had been opened. However, the door with the trash can had not. So my dad did the only thing he thought would probably help the situation. He talked with the supposed ghost. If you give us three days, just three days, we'll leave. I promise. And after that, everything stopped. Nothing strange happened again, but my dad kept his word and they left on the third day. Sometimes when I'm in the car with my mom and we drive down that desolate road, we pass by that house, and sometimes I think what would have happened if I had been born in that home. Would the ghost have left me alone, or would it have tried to hurt me? This episode is brought to you by Tales from the Break Room. Work is a part of life, but who said it would never be scary? Tales from the Break Room is a new podcast from EerieCast Network. Each episode features a story or stories about the most terrifying, allegedly true encounters that happen to people at work or on their commute. You'll hear about violent stalkers in retail and even disturbing, unexplained sightings in the military if you check out Tales from the Break Room today. In fact, I'm the host. Search for, follow, and rate Tales from the Break Room on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app. Or simply go to EerieCast.com. You can even possibly get paid for submitting your story at EerieCast.com slash submit if it ends up being narrated. The Colville Bridge from Ben B. This story took place in June of 2021. I live in central Kentucky, about 30 minutes from a covered bridge called the Colville Bridge. It's famous in this area because it's known to be haunted. It's said that in the early 1900s, a man hung himself from the rafters in the bridge. In the 1930s, a couple crashed a car and drowned in the river below the bridge. Then in the 50s, a woman was walking across the bridge and died from a heart attack right in the middle of it. I had heard from many friends that the place was haunted, but I thought it was just a bunch of BS. So my buddy and I got a wild hair one night and decided to go see what this place was all about. We had been fishing that evening and we weren't having much success, so I asked him if he wanted to go to the bridge and check it out. 
He agreed to go, but he thought it was a waste of time. To be honest, I was a little nervous to go after hearing the stories about the place, even though I thought they were just a bunch of crap before. I've heard that people have reported seeing a man hanging in the middle of the bridge, and have seen headlights coming from underneath the bridge like those of a car. We wanted to see that for ourselves that night. When we got there, it was still daytime. We wanted to stay until dark, so we could increase our chances of seeing something. So we walked around and walked across the bridge, and I could have swore I was hearing other footsteps behind us. But I put it off as it was a really old bridge, so to me, maybe it was just making some weird noises. When it got dark, we started driving back and forth through the bridge, even stopping in the middle of the bridge to see if we could see or hear something. And let me tell you, when it gets dark there, it's creepy. Really creepy. It looks like the kind of place where a horror movie would be filmed. We didn't see anything and my buddy was about to just leave, but I told him to park the car where we were facing the bridge and just turn the lights off and wait a few minutes. As soon as he stopped the car, we both got an uneasy feeling, like we were being watched. After about five minutes, I began to notice my friend who was driving was staring out my window. I didn't look out the window because I knew he was seeing something. All of a sudden, he turns the car on and slams the gas, yelling, Oh crap! He started going way too fast on this small, winding back road, and I tried my best to calm him down. He would not speak. He appeared to be hyperventilating, his face white as a sheet. When we got a couple miles away from the bridge, I asked him, What was it? He started to tear up, and all he said was, I don't want to talk about it right now. About 20 minutes later, he finally calmed down enough, and he pulled the car over and told me what he saw. I saw a woman coming out of the woods at the car. She looked old and her eyes were just white. She was probably only three or four feet from the car when we took off. As soon as he said this, I began thinking about the woman who died on the bridge in the 50s. When we got back to his place, we chilled with some Call of Duty until about 4 a.m., when we finally got calm and tired enough to fall asleep. I haven't been back to that place at night, and I don't plan to. It's a beautiful place for a drive in the daytime, but I'll never go back at night. If you want to learn more about the Colville Bridge, there are several videos on YouTube about it. There's even been paranormal investigators there. Just remember that if you ever go there at night, do not stop. It Knows I'm Here From Soccer Horror 0703 I am a big believer of the paranormal. I've even had some experiences of my own, such as things flying from shelves, whispers that were disembodied, footsteps, etc. I used to hate horror, but a friend of mine recommended some podcasts, and it pulled me out of my shell. About six or seven months ago, I started always feeling like I was being watched. I even saw yellow-orange or amber eyes watching me from a window in my living room. Later, I would begin to smell an odor, like a mix of dead skunk and wet dog. On one occasion, I was relaxing in my hot tub, drinking some water and turning the jets on high. I closed my eyes. I was very calm when I heard the cover being tapped on. I turned around and looked, only to see nothing. I was a little disturbed, but otherwise did nothing else. I calmed down, and when I heard it again, I freaked out, checked once more, then found a footprint in the snow nearby. It was a normal footprint without a shoe. Personally, I hate the cold and found it odd that someone would go around in the snow barefoot. Plus, there's not really a lot of homeless people nearby, but that's the only thing I could think of it being. Later, after I showered and went to bed, I checked my room as I always do. I began to read a comic on my phone afterward. Suddenly, my bed began to shake. I checked everything around me and lay down again, deeply disturbed and terrified. 
Nothing happened again for a while, and eventually I fell into an uneasy sleep. Eventually, I woke up to my tunnel door opening under my bed. I have a tunnel under my bed, and it's not exactly quiet. I shook my head, thinking it was nothing, when I felt a hand run down my leg. I screamed. I got up and ran to my parents, telling them, but they brushed it off as a dream that was realistic. They sent me back to bed. I gathered up every scrap of courage I had and checked my room, only to find nothing. Narrator's note right here. I think the author is referring to a crawlspace door. Not really sure what a tunnel would be doing under his bed like that. So my best guess is that it's a crawlspace opening. Back to the story. The following day, I took my dog on a walk to find my garden flattened near the door. At this time, it was just before winter, after the snow had fallen, so it was very cold outside. I stopped going out for a while until my friends dragged me out. My friends were J and S. S is a very happy and playful person who lives a sheltered life, while J is my girlfriend. J, S, and I went sledding to try and calm me down. I already told them about everything that happened and they wanted to get it off my mind. Soon it began to get dark, and we were about to leave when we noticed a tall figure watching us. We left, but it seemed to follow us. J had the bright idea to throw snowballs at the thing. When she did, she hit it directly in the face. This creature clearly hated it and screamed a horrible scream, something between an elk and a man being murdered. The thing scrambled away on all fours, and that's when I noticed how freaking skinny it was. It looked as if it hadn't eaten in years. We went home, and I haven't seen it since. I'm still confused on how a small snowball made it scream and run off like that. The horror we experienced that day has haunted us forever. I'm convinced it was the horrific creature from Navajo legend, a skinwalker. Thankfully, we seem to be safe now, and I haven't seen a thing like it since. A Close Call From Scribbly Bits In October of 2020, my family was visiting my grandfather for Thanksgiving weekend. I live in Canada, so our Thanksgiving is in October. We'd come to visit, despite the Rona, because my grandpa wasn't in the best shape. Don't get me wrong, the man could tangle with coyotes, but his age was catching up with them, and fixing a fence was a hard job for any able-bodied person. I spent my nights in the trailer just outside his house, because my brother was too proud to share a room. Luckily for me, this left me as the only one in the trailer, and I was able to stay up as late as I wanted. At night, I would sneak out to gaze at the brilliant stars I would never get to see in the city. One night, I felt restless, and as an insomniac, I knew one of the best cures for restlessness is a nice long walk. So I grabbed my hoodie, put on my boots, and headed out to the woods. Or what I called the woods. It was more like a field with a few groups of condensed trees. I headed toward the back of the field, because a calf was born earlier in the week, and the mother would often hide it in a group of trees by the back fence. As I approached, I realized that the cows weren't out by the back. I thought maybe they were all in the brush, so I continued further in. When I got there, I found they were gone. I figured they could have moved to another part of the field, but I was already pretty tired, so I decided to head back. Before I did head back, I looked around the bushes for any sticks I could turn into spears. As I looked, I began to feel a sense of dread, and I got the feeling of eyes on me. I turned around and looked, but saw nothing. I shrugged it off, but decided to postpone my spear search for tomorrow. As I turned to leave, I heard the sound of leaves being crushed, coming from beyond the fence, and in the real forest. Instinctively, I ducked down, I was about to stand to look at the sound source until I heard the creaking of the old fence. I huddled behind a tree as I heard the footsteps of something walking on two legs, but what disturbed me the most was its frantic breathing like it was sniffing the air. When I heard the footsteps get further away, I took my opportunity to run back to the house. I ran faster and longer than I ever have. The entire time, I heard footsteps running behind me, and when I got to the house, 
I made a split-second decision to hide in a freshly raked pile of leaves because the house was locked and it would take too long to open the trailer door. From the leaf pile, I finally saw my pursuer. It had to be six feet tall, with the torso and arms of a man and the legs and head of a wolf, eyes orange like a flame. It trudged around for a few moments, sniffing the air, trying to find its lost prey. But after a few excruciatingly long minutes, it got on all fours and ran away. I was too scared, far too tired to leave the leaf pile, and after a while, I passed out. I awoke at the crack of dawn to the sound of my grandfather slamming the front door. I was soaked in condensation from the leaves. Not wanting to explain myself, I decided to wait for him to leave before I went back into my trailer and went back to bed. When I woke up again, I came in for breakfast, and there sat Grandpa. He told me that the calf was missing and that we needed to go out looking for it. But we never did find that calf. That brings us to the end of this episode of Darkness Prevails. More terrifying stories are on the way soon, so subscribe and smash that like button. By the way, did you know this show is available as a podcast called Unexplained Encounters? Just search for, follow, and rate Unexplained Encounters on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app. This show is part of the EerieCast network. Go to EerieCast.com for more scary podcasts, such as Freaky Folklore, which explores your favorite monsters, myths, and mysteries, as well as Redwood Bureau, a fictional horror podcast about an agent on the run from an evil secret organization that captures supernatural creatures and entities. Well, thanks for tuning in. Stay safe out there and stay creepy, because this world is a strange one.